Hi, my name is Melissa Hall, and I work on a team whose mission is to ensure the responsible use of AI at Facebook. At Facebook, we believe that it's essential to evaluate machine learning and AI systems to ensure that they are not biased against users. This presentation gives an overview of algorithmic fairness, including an explanation of the intricacies within large-scale systems that make them vulnerable to biases and the multiple ways of measuring fairness. I'll focus this talk on developing ethical AI systems with a focus on safety and equity for users. I'll begin with a bird's eye view of machine learning systems and discuss the ways that fairness concerns could manifest throughout the development process. I'll share a commonly cited fairness case study to highlight biases in machine learning systems. I'll then give an overview of the multiple conflicting methods of measuring bias in models. I'll conclude by sharing additional points of consideration when building machine learning systems that have human impact. To begin, before we can understand whether a system is fair, it's important to have a clear sense of what's at stake. Fairness is not just an engineering problem, but it is crucial for engineers to think about the ways their products interact with society. When someone interacts with a given system, what are they getting out of it? What are the benefits? It's also important to understand the risks, and in particular, a few kinds of potential harms. Consider, does the system restrict access to resources or opportunities for certain subgroups? Does the system reinforce harmful stereotypes? Does it perform reasonably well for everyone? And beyond the impact to individual end users, it's also important to ask, what kinds of unintended impacts might this system have on society as a whole? Fairness is a process, and as I said before, not just an engineering problem. It requires different kinds of expertise, as well as input from a range of stakeholders. If we zoom out, this is what the process looks like. First, it's important to understand the product goals, policy, and implementation within the broader social context where the system will be used. Next, hold conversations with stakeholders to reach consensus to outline measurement and mitigation plans. How is the system performing and why does it perform that way? To measure fairness with robustness, it's important to look at different points in the process of developing a machine learning system. Start at the process of defining the policy ground truth with the intention of understanding whether this policy has been designed such that specific groups are systematically favored or disfavored. In the process of collecting labels, the developer needs to look at how the human labeling along the policy lines matches the actual content. It's important to understand whether the human labeling program is robust against labelers who might be inclined to introduce their own social or ideological biases. Then of course, there's a step of understanding whether the AI systems introduce fairness concerns. Finally, it's important to examine the intervention step. I'll focus this talk on the ways of measuring fairness in the algorithmic step of the workflow. There are a lot of metrics that people have proposed for measuring fairness, and it can get pretty contentious. Let's talk about an example. A commonly cited case study by ProPublica researchers in 2016 focused on the Compass Recidivism Risk Assessment, which was developed by a company called North Point. This software is used by US courts to determine the likelihood that a defendant recidivates meaning the likelihood that a defendant relapses into behavior that led them to court in the first place. At the time of the study, defendants would complete a Compass questionnaire that would then be fed into the Compass software to determine prediction scores for things like the risk of recidivism and risk of violent recidivism, which were later surfaced to judges. ProPublica's analysis found evidence of bias against Black defendants in the Compass system. Specifically, they claim that among defendants who did not go on to reoffend, Black defendants were often predicted to be at a higher risk of recidivism than they actually were, while white defendants were often predicted to be less risky than they were. According to ProPublica's work, Black defendants who did not reoffend were almost twice as likely as their white counterparts to be misclassified as a higher risk. This demonstrates a concern for equality of outcome. North Point, the company that created the Compass Assessment, responded to Republica's concerns by claiming that for any given score on its 10-point scale, white and black defendants were just as likely to reoffend as each other. 
They're essentially saying that their system demonstrated a quality of treatment. There are a variety of metrics used to measure fairness and bias in machine learning systems. In this case, ProPublica used the false positive rate across black and white defendants to determine that the compass assessment was unfair, while North Point used calibration measurements to claim that the system was fair. It's worth also pointing out that the data they trained on may embed biases. The likelihood of recidivism in the training data was possibly the outcome of a biased justice system. In our framework, that would be considered label bias. But for the rest of this presentation, we'll be focusing on the question of model bias and assuming that we're discussing systems with correct labels. Across academia and industry, there are multiple and oftentimes conflicting notions of fairness. For example, one fairness goal could be a quality of treatment, where similar samples from two different groups are treated the same. On the other hand, a fairness goal could be to ensure a quality of outcome, which means that samples from different groups have the same likelihood of a certain outcome. This might require an equal treatment, since oftentimes there are external confounding factors, such as historical biases, that need correcting for. There are a few ways we could compare how a model performs for different groups. The first is demographic parity, meaning that the proportion of positive decisions should be the same across all groups. When applied to our pretrial example, demographic parity means that the rate of labeling a defendant as high risk is equal across both black and white defendants. However, when the true underlying distribution of risk varies across groups, Differences in group level error rates can happen when algorithms accurately capture each individual's risk. Attempts to adjust for these differences often require implicitly or explicitly misclassifying low risk members of one group as high risk and high risk members of another as low risk, potentially harming members of all groups in the process. Another metric is the concept of equal opportunity, which focuses on the advantaged outcome. This would mean that the compass assessment would correctly classify defendants who don't reoffend as low risk at equal rates for both black and white defendants. In other settings in which the advantage outcome is a positive classification, they would need to be equal to positive rates. There's also equalized odds, which is a stricter fairness condition than equal opportunity. In equalized odds for the compass assessment, both the false negative rates and the true negative rates should be equal across groups. This punishes models that perform only well in the majority. Like with equal opportunity, the choice to require a quality of false and true positive versus negative rates is dependent on the advantage classification in your setting. Note that a, a drawback of equalized odds and equal opportunity are that it's possible to gain these rates by introducing more examples where scores are extreme. Furthermore, equalized odds is usually only possible by introducing randomness into the decision-making procedure. Finally, there's calibration. Calibration means that regardless of the group that a sample is in, a model's predicted probability for the sample represents the true probability of occurrence. In the context of the compass risk assessment, calibration means that among the defendants with a given risk score, the proportion that would re-offend if released is the same for both groups. While calibration is generally desirable, it has been shown to prove only a weak, provide only a weak guarantee of equity. In particular, it is often straightforward to satisfy calibration while strategically misclassifying individuals in order to discriminate. Now, of course, it would be great if we could simultaneously satisfy all fairness definitions. However, this is only possible under certain highly unlikely circumstances like when there's a perfect predictor or equivalent base rates across subgroups. Therefore, it's important for developers and organizations to understand the different ways to measure fairness and the inherent trade-offs they have. The mathematical conceptions of fairness are grounded in contextual and philosophical perspectives that are often unique to specific individuals. It's important to consider these perspectives among builders and stakeholders when establishing definitions and metrics for measuring fairness. Some questions to think about fairness could include, what is a person's source of value from the decision? What can we expect a system to guarantee for its users? What groups matter when measuring and ensuring the fairness of a system? What information about systematic differences between groups should be available to the model and what should be excluded? 
What privacy trade-off do these decisions imply? Sometimes it may be more useful to revisit what the model is assigned to do. In other words, to interrogate the target metric, product goals, and policy. Is this system something that should exist at all? As you can see, measuring and evaluating fairness, even at just the model stage, is not an easy task. Fairness is a process. It requires systematic thinking, and at every step of the implementation of the system, we must surface the risks and the hard questions of fairness. Processes need to be built for resolving these questions, and a record of the decisions should be maintained along the way. For this hackathon, we ask you to build tools that make these evaluations easy, but also not oversimplifying the complexity of fairness. Thank you.